Hey everyone, welcome to today's lesson. My name is Wes and this is Interactive English, the channel. It's really, it's just all about trying to help you practice and improve your English skills so that you can achieve English fluency. And if this is your first time here, I would love to hear from you. Please write your name in the comments, say hello. Uh, I love hearing from, from new people uh, to our channel. So today I have a lesson that it's, it's a little bit uh, current events because as many of you know, there was a presidential election in the United States and I, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. It's in the news a lot, what's going on. And in this lesson, we're going to look at several different online articles and we're gonna read a little bit about the article and then I'm gonna pick out some of the useful vocabulary that I think will help you better comprehend what it is that you're reading, but also this is gonna help your listening because I'm going to try and highlight some of the words that I think are a little more difficult, more advanced, and some of them that I think are very important and will help you if you want to learn more about this. If you're reading other articles or perhaps you're watching the news, you may hear some of these words and phrases. So I really just want to do this to help with your comprehension. I'm not really, I'm not really gonna get into my personal opinion about Joe Biden or Donald Trump. I, at, toward the end, I will share my opinion about what's going to happen maybe, what I think is going to happen, but I really wanna focus on a few of these articles, talk about the election, what's going to happen next, and, and kind of how it works. So I do wanna say a quick hello to some of you who are with me. Uh, Lolly, as always, great to see you. Angela, John, Paolo, Zanat. Um, uh, Elias, welcome, so, Orlando, so many people from all over the world, that's wonderful. Uh, the, I, I do have a couple of things I just wanna show you. Um, we have our vocabulary document, which I'm going to be picking out some of those words from the articles, and after this lesson, I will put all of these words down in the description, uh, as well as links to these articles, in case you want to finish reading them and review. We're not going to read the entire article. The other thing I wanna show you is if you want to learn a little bit more about the, the US election and how it works, I did a lesson uh, about a month ago talking about the electoral college system. I did the same thing. It was a vocabulary lesson and I was talking about some of the words that are relevant to the way that the US does an election as well as explaining how it works. So uh, I will leave a link to that lesson um, in the comments. I'm also gonna throw it in the chat right now uh, if you would like to learn about a little bit more about how the election process works. So there's a link right there in the chat if you want to uh, check that lesson out. And that's more explaining, well, how do we do this? How do we work our system? Today, I wanna focus really on um, what's going to happen now. Where do we go from here? So of course I told you this is kind of a, a reading and vocabulary lesson and there's so much information out there because it, you could do uh, just a quick Google search and you're gonna find all of this information. I just typed in US election 2020 and there are so many different articles about it. It's, it's, a, it's a current event, something, it just recently happened. So you're gonna find a lot of different news out there. but because we're gonna focus on where do we go from here, what happens next, this is the first article that we're going to talk about, which is uh, here's when the results of the 2020 election will be finalized. Because I know some of you are thinking about, well, okay, the election is over. Yes, it is over, but it's not finalized, <laughs> okay? So that's a little bit of a distinction and let's read some of this and we'll pick out uh, a few vocabulary words that I think will help you. So um, the first thing that we're gonna talk about is let's just read some of this uh, together right here and then I'll talk about a few words. So it says, Joe Biden is the president elect of the United States as NBC News projected Saturday, but the results of the election won't be finalized until January. When Americans cast their ballots for president on November 3rd, they weren't voting directly for Biden or the incumbent Donald Trump. Donald Trump. 
President Donald Trump, but rather for their state's electors. Members of the Electoral College cast their votes for president on behalf of their states. Then Congress convenes to count the electoral votes and announce the results of the election. So let's look at a few words from this um, that may you may think would be useful, okay? So here I have, right here, okay, I gotta move around um, quite a few of these screens. So this is that first, um, that first article. Here's when the results for the 2020 election will be finalized. Uh, I want to look at these first two words right here. So it says that they projected that the winner will be Joe Biden. To project, when it's used as a verb, it's talking about you're calculating an amount in the future based on the information that you already have. So the they know how the votes are coming in and who's winning. And because of that, you can project who the winner will be. So they are projecting that Joe Biden is the winner. The other one, they, they mentioned the incumbent, Donald, uh, President Donald uh, Trump. So this is a term that I think is very relevant to politics. If you say somebody is an incumbent, it means that they are officially having a named position. So basically, if you already have the job, if you are the political representative, whether you are the president or you have some other position, you are the incumbent. And then during the next election, you would have to run against another candidate. So that's another word when talking about politics that you're likely to come across. Somebody might mention the incumbent. So in this case, the incumbent was Donald Trump. So let's look at the next part uh, of this article and see what it has to say. This is gonna helping you understand what's gonna happen next, okay? So it says, uh, in a controversial move, Trump has refused to concede the election and is mounting efforts to challenge ballots in multiple states, even as tabulation continues. Here are the key steps in the electoral pr college process between now and inauguration day. So, Let's look at that word uh, to concede, because this is a word that if you're listening to the news um, or you're reading other articles about the election right now, that's probably something that you're hearing, that Trump right now has not conceded the election. So what that means, if you say that someone's going to concede, it means, uh, let's go back over to our... Uh, vocabulary list, I already have it written down. To concede means to admit unwillingly that something is true. So when you concede an election, you're basically admitting, yes, the election is over, I lost, and I concede the election. So that has not happened yet. But it really, it, it, it does not have to happen in order for um, Biden to become president. So it's more, it's more of a, a custom, a tradition, that the person who loses would concede and congratulate the winner. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, the other word that it's talking about is, let, let's talk about inauguration. I, I have it written down there. I didn't have these in the order. but So it said that um, it, they're wondering if this will happen before inauguration. Inauguration is talking about the ceremony of officially putting somebody in an important position. In this case, you're talking about uh, becoming president and they have a presidential uh, inauguration, this ceremony. I think many countries uh, around the world when they, if you select your political representatives, your president, your prime minister, there is probably some type of inauguration. The ceremony, that's what it's called. So let's look at the next part because I wanna talk about, okay, well, what, what's going to happen next? So right now it says that um, the, the votes are in. So each state has um, the votes that they've received, people cast their ballots, and now the states will need to certify the results, to certify. To certify something means, I put it on our vocabulary list, means to say that something is true. So the next step is that states have, most of it will happen this month. The states will certify the, the results and say, yes, it's true, it's accurate, 
that this is the results of our election. So that is the next step. I know that part of um, what's been going on, Trump, uh, they, they were trying to challenge it. They're trying to stop or slow down the states from certifying the election. But m this is probably going to happen this month. The states will certify the election, the, the results, and they'll say that it's true. We're gonna fast forward ahead because I wanna talk about the next step. Once the results are certified, what will happen then is that the electors, uh, on December 8th, that is the last day for the states to resolve any kind of disputes or disagreements uh, they have until December 8th. Because on December 14th, the electors will cast their ballot. As I said, we, we have a really kind of screwy system in the United States if you're not familiar with the Electoral College. So people cast their votes um, and then each state has a number of electoral votes or electors. Electors are the people. So let me give you an example just really quickly. Uh, California has 50 electoral votes. So the state of California, because it has the biggest population, has 50 electoral votes. So the state will choose 50 electors, 50 people that will cast the vote on behalf of the voters. So because Joe Biden won California, those 50 electors are then in, in what the, the way it should work is they will then cast their vote for Joe Biden, those 50 electoral votes. And that is what determines who is president. So hypothetically, hypothetically, you could have electors decide to say, look, I know that the people chose this. I'm going to vote a different way. That is very uncommon. It does not really happen. I want to say that um, some, if you are an elector and you, it, you basically promise to vote the way that the, the people in the state have voted. If you go against that and you don't do it, I think that um, you could even get in trouble, that there might be some kind of penalty. I don't know if you have to pay money or go to jail, um, but you could get in trouble. But those voters will cast their vote on behalf of the, the state. And what I mean by on behalf of, it's like the people in California, they voted for Joe Biden. So the elector is going to, they know that, so they are, they're going to cast their vote for Joe Biden on behalf of them. You, you may be wondering, like I said, why does the US do this? The reason why I think they wanted to have one final check that if the people in the US voted for somebody who was, uh, who they should not get voted in, the electors was like one other check to possibly stop that from happening. But in this case, the electors have been chosen. Once the votes are certified on December 14th, they will then cast uh, the official vote. Um, and at this point, those votes will uh, go for Joe Biden. I don't know that if you've seen the, the counts that they are projected, again, those are projections, like they're guessing that it's 306 to like 232. Those are the electoral votes. So that is what makes it official. So hopefully, hopefully this makes a little more sense as to what's going to happen from now into the future, that the states will then certify the results this month. And then on December 14th, the electors will cast their ballot. And then in January, you have the inauguration, okay? So that's a lot to take in, <laughs> all right? All right, so I wanna look at another article and pick out a few more words that will help. Again, if you guys are just joining me, um, we're talking about uh, it helping you improve your comprehension to understand the aftermath of the US election, what's going to happen from now until January when uh, the new president uh, is comes into office, which is at this point, president-elect Joe Biden. So let's look at the next article. Uh, so that's kind of a little bit of a history, all right? I know like, like again, it's always interesting conversation because people are very, uh, people are very, they have very strong opinions, I think, when it comes to politics. And it's uh, everybody, a lot of people are very divided. Let's, uh, let's look at the next article, okay? 
So the next article, and I'll again, I'll pick out some vocabulary from this article. It's really talking about um, mm, right here about conceding. So I told you right now that um, Trump has not conceded the election. To concede is kind of to admit that okay, this is this is true. This was fair. Um, I, I lost the election. He has not conceded, and he's challenging this in court. And they're trying to challenge this. So I want to talk. This is talking about um, kind of no modern presidential candidate has refused to concede. Here's why it matters. Really, I want to highlight some of the vocabulary that I, I think is very useful in this. That these are words when talking about politics, I, I think are very common. So it says no modern presidential candidate has refused to concede. Here's why this matters. The formal concession, concession speech has played a vital role in even the most divisive elections from the Civil War to Bush v. Gore. So you know what it is to concede. It says it's a vital role. Vital is a great adjective that means something is important. And it says one of the most divisive elections. This is an adjective that I think you'll, you'll come across a lot if you're reading about U.S. politics, or possibly even uh, politics in your own country. And people talk about something or someone, maybe a person is divisive. And what it means to be divisive, uh, if we go back to our vocabulary list, uh, let me move this down so you guys can see this list of vocabulary words, and then we'll talk about them. Divisive is describing something that causes great disagreement within a group of people. So you could just, I, I think often you might use it to describe a person. It can be divisive. Some people, uh, people think Trump is very divisive. And I think it's, it's interesting with U.S. politics, especially when thinking about um, Trump, because what I would say is the, th the things that people hate about Donald Trump, his critics, the things that they hate about him are almost the same things that his supporters love about him. So you have a, a lot of disagreement between the critics and the supporters because some of the things that the critics would hate are the same things that the supporters love. And it's really hard to bridge uh, that gap in between. But I wanna look at uh, some more words from this article as we go through it. So, okay, here we go. Let's go down a little bit. I'm not gonna read the whole article. I just wanna pick out some of the vocabulary that I think is useful when talking about the, the US election. So it says, even though Joe Biden has secured enough votes to become president-elect of the United States, President Donald Trump has given every indication that he won't accept the results as fair. Trump, has, uh, all, Trump also has refused to commit to a peaceful transfer of power. Both moves would be historical. First, if Trump refuses to concede, even after all legal challenges are resolved, U.S. history has seen a handful of bitterly contested elections, most recently in 2000, when Democrat Al Gore called Republican George W. Bush to concede in the early hours after election night, only to call back and retract his concession when the race unexpe unexpectedly tightened up. While their first conversation was congenial, the second was tense, with Gore famously telling Bush, you don't have to get snippy about this. Um, let me, so let's see, how much more did I wanna read? Okay. No presidential candidate has ever refused to concede defeat once all the votes were counted and legal challenges resolved. For the country's first uh, 100 years or so, conceding a race wasn't part of the process at all. Here's how the loser's concession went from non-existent to essential custom that all candidates have observed, albeit uh, albeit some less graciously than others. So let's look at some of the vocabulary for this. They're talking about um, Trump has not conceded and so far has refused to commit to a peaceful transfer uh, of power. That's another word that, uh, a phrase that I think you, you might hear if you're watching a news program and they might talk about uh, a peaceful transition of power. It's when the leaders of a government peacefully hand over control to newly elected leaders. Probably, I think, 
you, you guys understand this. You probably heard it. It really means exactly uh, what it says, that there is a peaceful transfer of power. You're transferring it to uh, the new elected leaders. They mentioned the, the word contested. So to contest something as a verb is to say that something is unfair and you try to have it change. So right now, Trump is contesting the elections. In this case, they used it, in this article, they used it as an adjective, saying that it is a contested election. So you could use it as a verb to contest something or as an adjective, the meaning is the same. So a contested election is when one person, in this case, uh, Trump, is saying that it's unfair and they're trying to get it overturned. Uh, so they mentioned that in the past, you also had a contested election in the year 2000 between Al Gore and George W. Bush. And they, they mentioned that the phone call was congenial. That's just a word that I wanted to pick out. If you say something is congenial, it means it's friendly, it's pleasant. The next time they spoke, it was not very pleasant. And then that other word that uh, I want to show you, albeit, this is a good uh, conjunction. So if you go back here, it says, um, where was it? Let me find out where it was. So you can see how it's used in context. So it says, here's how the loser's concession went from non-existent to an essential custom that all candidates have, have observed, albeit some less graciously than others. So they're saying for, for a long time, this has become custom that the losing candidate would concede. And in this case, they're saying it's custom, albeit, although some concessions are not as graceful as others. Some of them are a little more controversial. Maybe there's a little more anger, emotion involved, like, like the one in 2000. So again, these are some great words to know if you're trying to understand more about what's going on with these uh, elections. All right, I have another article that I want to talk about, which is recent, because again, people, um, Trump is contesting the election. He does not agree with these results, but right now Biden is projected to win. And as I showed you in that first uh, article, this month, the states will certify the results. They'll, they'll come out and say, yes, this is right, this is correct. And then on December, I think it was December 14th, unless I've forgotten. On December 14th, the electors will then cast uh, their final vote and then it becomes official and then the inauguration would be in January. So let's look at this last website because again, they're all right now they're talking about, um, uh, they're mentioning fraud and issues like that. So these are some words that I wanted to do, but this was something that came out really recently, um, which is not helping Trump. So this is an article, um, which you can see, it says, let me move it down so you guys can see the title. So it says, Trump's own officials say 2020 was America's most secure election in history. And I say that it's not helping Trump is because even uh, in the government, uh, the Department of Homeland Security came out and made a statement and said, yes, the election was fair that there was no widespread fraud. So I'll just read the, the, um, the, I'll just read this part again and then I wanna pick out a word or two. It says, Trump's own officials say 2020 was America's most secure election in history. Homeland Security put out a statement with state and local officials that countered the president's fraud claims, okay? I want to look at those two words, countered the president's fraud claims, to counter something and fraud. Those are the first two words that I have for this article right here. So if we go over here, um, again, I have a list of words. We'll go through them a little bit at a time. So to counter something um, is to react in the opposing opinion or action. So when you're countering it, you're, you're giving um, the opposing view. For example, you might hear it used in the term counter argument. Somebody is presenting an argument and then another person gives the counter argument, the opposing view. So the, the Homeland Security gave the counter view, the saying, no, 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 there was no fraud. Um, and they countered his view that fraud um, was committed. If you don't know what fraud is, it's, um, 
Again, it's a word you probably are hearing a lot of if you're listening to U.S. politics and what's going on. Trump is claiming fraud that it, it's the crime of deceiving people. It's a very broad term. It's not specific. It's just saying that, uh, that there was some type of crime. So let's go back to the article. Um, I have some more words that I want to share with you. And we'll see what this says. Um, okay. So again, I'm going to read some of it and then uh, we'll look at the words. I'm not going to read the whole article. I will leave these um, articles down in the description if you want to read them. Again, reading is such a good way to improve your English skills and it's a great way to build your vocabulary because my hope is that if you learn some of these new words and you continue reading about the US election, you're probably going to come across these words again and then you'll come across it again and again and again and suddenly you, you now understand this word. You're putting it up in your active memory. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go to, where is it? Uh, let me read this article right here. Um, okay. It says the 2000, where is it? Wait a second. Uh, okay. The 2020 U.S. election was the most secure in American history. According to U.S. election officials, um, the November 3rd election was the most secure in American history. Right now, across the country, election officials are reviewing and double checking the entire election process prior to finalizing the result. The, co the coordinating bodies on election infrastructure and security said in a joint statement issued by the Department of Homeland Security, so Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA. All right, that was a lot to... Uh, <laughs> That was a lot to big sentence to get through. The statement directly contradicts President Donald Trump, who has made unfounded allegations of widespread voting irregularities and fraud. The president is using these claims to challenge the vote counts in several key states that delivered President-elect Joe Biden his apparent Electoral College victory. The Trump campaign has filed dozens of lawsuits, some of which have already been dismissed, but the barrage of legal action and Trump's false claims, often bolstered by right-wing media and some of the president's allies in the Republican Party, have undermined overall faith in the electoral process and in the safety and security of U.S. elections. Okay, so let's look at a few of these words. Uh, the first one that I wanted to talk about was that they, uh, again, this is talking about the DHS they came out and gave a counter view saying there was no fraud and they put out a joint statement. So the joint statement was with the Department of Homeland Security, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. So this was um, the first word that I wanted to point out, joint. So if you say that something is joint, it's belonging to or shared between two people. So they put out a joint statement you may hear somebody use joint um, if they're talking about um, joint custody is another phrase that you may hear this in. With um, the next one, they're talking about unfounded allegations, okay? So unfounded allegations. Allegations where it's a statement because Trump has made allegations saying that without giving proof, something wrong has happened. Unfounded, so far they're saying unfounded is the adjective, just uh, describing that, unfounded allegations. Unfounded means it's not based in, on fact. So right now they, the DHS is saying they have not found uh, voting irregularities, so they are unfounded allegations. It's not based in fact, uh, but allegations are that you're making that statement without proof. And again, these are... These are two words that you're also going to hear a lot about saying that uh, Trump is making allegations or somebody else is making allegations that something happened. And then somebody else might say, well, it's unfounded. And if you hear that, you know, unfounded means, OK, it's not uh, it's they're saying it's not based on fact. All right. So those are some really great words to know if you're trying to understand what's going on. Um, the next part that I want to say dismiss and bolster was in that last paragraph. So it said that Trump has filed many lawsuits. 
many of the lawsuits have been dismissed. And they're saying that some of the, the claims, the fraud claims, are bolstered by right-wing media. I want to talk about those two words, dismissed and bolster. So if we go back to our vocabulary list, to dismiss means that you, you're saying it's not important, it's not worth considering. So if you're talking about like, um, like the law and uh, lawyers and you have a lawsuit, this is a word that you will commonly hear. You might hear that the lawsuit was dismissed, that it was the judge decided it's not worth considering and they dismissed the lawsuit. So that is a good verb to know if you're reading something that has to do with the law or a lawsuit, um, such as this case, because Trump has filed lawsuits. Many of them have been dismissed. But they say that these claims of voter fraud are bolstered by right-wing media. If you bolster something, another good verb to, to learn, in case you didn't know what it meant, it means to support something and you're trying to make it stronger. You're trying to bolster this claim, okay? So these are some good words uh, to know, which I think are very common if you're, again, you're reading something about the US election or you're trying to understand, well, what's going on? What's happening with all of this? These are some good words to know. Again, I'm going to put all of these words down in the description after the lesson, along with links to the article. The words will be there in case you'd like to review. These are very useful words for, um, for understanding what's happening. So the one thing I wanna say, again, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna share my opinion uh, about where what's going to happen in the future um, and where this is going to take us. But I do want to say if you guys like if you like what we do here at Interactive English and you want to show us some love, you can support our channel with a YouTube membership or on Patreon. Links again to those are, are down in the description below. So let me let me give you my view. Um, I was trying to give this lesson and not really get into my personal opinion about uh, Trump or Biden. It was mostly just trying to help you understand what's happening with this, trying to help you build your vocabulary and uh, help you more easily comprehend the information that you might be reading or listening to later on um, in the future if you're listening to anything about politics. So what I think is gonna happen, um, this is just my view. As I said, the next step is that this month, the states are going to certify the results. I think that some of them, like uh, in Georgia, they're doing a recount at this point. Re is a great uh, prefix to learn, to means to do again. So they're counting again to make sure it's right. But I think most of the, the, the states are going to certify their results. All 50 states will certify the results and they're gonna come back and say that, yes, uh, this is the outcome uh, of the election, that Joe Biden won and on December 14th, those electors that were chosen, I think they are then going to cast their votes for Joe Biden. And the result is going to be the same as what's projected right now. I think it's going to be 306 to 232. And then in January, there is going to be an inauguration for Joe Biden. That's what I think is going to happen. But then let's move further into the future. What's going to happen to Donald Trump? Because I know there's a lot of speculation um, about what's he going to do uh, next, what he would do. And this is just my view, my opinion, because I think Trump, he loves the spotlight. He comes from TV, that is his world. I think that people view the US politics a little bit like uh, reality TV. He uses those phrases like stay tuned, we'll see. It's like trying to keep people like tuned in for next week, the same way you do with a TV show. So I think that's kind of going to continue. And what I think he's going to do, I think he's going to concede, but I think he's going to concede in his way, which means I think at some point, Trump will give a concession speech, but it's, not, it's going to be different than all the others. Because I think he, this is my view, I think he's going to concede and say yes, the uh, we lost this election because it was rigged and because it was fake. So I still think that he's going to say he's lost because that I think he's still going to say because there was this fraud, um, even though those allegations, just to review, those allegations are unfounded. 
All right, it's always good to review some of this vocabulary. So I think he's going to concede um, in his way. I think there will be an inauguration for Joe Biden uh, in January. And then afterwards, I think Trump is going to still try to, to keep the spotlight. I think Trump will, people talking about maybe doing some type of media company, like a, a, perhaps a TV show or a podcast. I think he's still going to stay actively involved in politics. And what I think, because he's the TV guy, I think he's going to end his concession really and probably say that he's going to try and run again in 2024. So the next election in the US will be four years later in 2024. I think he's going to, uh, to say that he's probably going to run. Again, he's not gonna make a commitment. That's not what they do in TV. You need to keep that suspense. He'll say probably, we'll see, stay tuned. And I think he'll do that for the next few, few years in order to, to stay relevant to, uh, for people to listen to him. He'll say, I'm going to run. And my prediction is that in 2023 or in early 2024, he's not going to run for re-election. That's just my view. I think he's going to continue to say, stay tuned. We'll see. Stay tuned. And then I think he's going to uh, decide not to do it. That's just my view. Um, and yeah, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> there it is. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. I hope you learned some new vocabulary. And again, reading, it's an excellent way to build your vocabulary. I hope I would encourage you guys all right now, if you're watching this right now, once this lesson is over, go find uh, an article and, and read it. Build your vocabulary. It, it will help you. All right. So Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Just give some shout outs at the end. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, Lorraine, Anaya, Orlando, Sleepwalker. Um, Serge, what's up? Nice to have you here. Juan, um, hope you enjoyed the lesson, found it useful. And then stay tuned. I'm gonna use that stay tuned for another lesson next week. Uh, I haven't decided on the topic, I think maybe we'll do uh, maybe a cultural lesson on Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving is right around the corner. So thank you guys again. Uh, Lolly, thanks for being here. Cece, uh, Angela, Bamba, uh, Kareem, Hassan. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will see you.